Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about what is in my opinion, one of the best wildflowers you can encourage into your garden in early spring. So we're talking March through to April time. And it is the wonderful and very often sadly maligned dandelion. Look at that, an absolute sea of yellow. It really is a gorgeous sight at this time of year. And stick around because in a moment or two, we're gonna be talking at exactly why the dandelion has received so much bad press over the years and is so much, well, in the firing line, I think, of so many traditional gardeners, if you like, which obviously you guys that are regular viewers of the channel will know I'm trying to change trends. I'm trying to get everybody to move towards a more environmentally friendly and certainly wildlife friendly way of having a garden. And that is to encourage as much wildlife and wildflowers, obviously, into it. But in this video, I just couldn't help but want to bring you some shots of these dandelions because now is the time as we get towards the middle of April, they're absolutely at their peak. And when I was in France a couple of weeks ago, they were already peaking, so no doubt they'll be going over. But what is the purpose of a dandelion? What are the benefits of it? Now, if you could get here in this field with me right now and crouch down and just look across the tops of these flowers, you would see just how many bees and other insects are using this abundant source of nectar and pollen. And it's not just bees. My favorite butterfly, the orange tip butterfly, likes the nectar on it, along with commas, peacocks, um, holly blue, you name it. There's a whole host of butterflies, small tortoise shells as well, because they're such a good source of early nectar for a lot of, um, a lot of insects that emerge early on after hibernating over the winter time. So particularly our peacocks, uh, and red admiral butterflies, uh, sorry, not the red admiral, peacock, small tortoiseshell, and brimstone is the other one I meant to say, which will overwinter as adults. The red admirals quite often, uh, they do start, they have started to overwinter now, but quite often they'll be coming in early as they move north on their migration from the continent. Um, so yes, that's often where you'll find some uh, red admirals first thing, sometimes in February even, but I think these might be the ones that are starting to overwinter here. Uh, yes, so fascinating, but there are so many insects that benefit from these. And not only that, later on in the year when these go to seed, obviously we get the iconic image of the sort of dandelion clock, which is absolutely brilliant. And obviously I'm sure many of you will remember as a kid or even as an adult, picking one and blowing it. And they are just a wonderful, wonderful nostalgic plant, I think, certainly one that takes me back to my childhood. Um, but these seeds are actually a vital source of food for a lot of our finches. So things like our goldfinches, chaffinches, linnets, these are all birds in the UK that will use these seed heads when they have finished flowering. So a really good source of food for the birds as well. Not only that, they're good for uh, tortoises and rabbits if you've got any. <laughs> So yes, dandelions are absolutely brilliant. And one thing that I'm trying to do is encourage people to see them as a natural wildflower. Now, many of us, and I will be talking about this in more detail in another video to come, but many of us have been um, classing these plants for a long, long time as weeds, which I think the word weed shouldn't even exist in today's language. Yes, there are problematic species of plants, but these are all wildflowers. Put in another setting, they would be a wildflower in their natural environment. So we've got things like Himalayan balsam, which can become uh, a bit of a problem species. Um, dandelions, which Himalayan balsam, I should say, isn't a native plant to the UK, but it is a problem species along our riverbanks. Uh, because it swamps out a lot of the other species, but the dandelions definitely are not a problem. And I really want to change the way we perceive weed species because there really should be no such thing as a weed, as I say, and it's something that I have been talking to the RHS about uh, because I'm a little bit annoyed that they are promoting all the benefits of gardening in a more wildlife friendly manner these days, yet on the same token, they're still promoting the use of pesticides, uh, slug pellets, um, how to control weed species in your garden and selling chemicals in their own stores. Completely disjointed message. So a full video coming up on my progress with them as the largest and most influential charity in the UK. I think they have a massive, massive opportunity that they should be persuading as many people as possible to stop using these abhorrent products and 
get in line with where we need to all be heading these days and that is of course gardening in a more wildlife friendly way so uh, more to come on another video like I say guys but let's talk a little bit now about why the dandelion is so often maligned in today's world and has been for centuries and unfortunately it started with the introduction of the landed gentry shall we say so many centuries ago when a sign of wealth was to have a mown lawn because the more people you could employ to cut your lawn obviously they didn't have any lawn mowers back then it was all done with hand shears the more people you could employ to cut your lawn and physically weed and remove weed species such as dandelions well the wealthier you were so that is of course where we get this bowling green mentality from where a lawn has to be perfect and cannot be seen to have a wildflower in it well let's stop that right there because times are changing we're in an environmental crisis and an ecological one and we need to be encouraging our native wildflowers within our space i mean what would you rather look at that or perfectly flat green lawn I know what I would rather look at. <laughs> I think it's quite obvious and it's beneficial for wildlife. So it costs less, it looks better and it's beneficial for wildlife. You tell me the downsides. Yes, so these unfortunate flowers were perceived as weed species back in the day, many centuries ago. And then of course that progressed into our homes as we started getting wealthier um, as a species and we started gaining more money uh, we could afford to have our own plot with our own garden and then that way we could have a mini version of what these stately homes were showing off to show that we too had a small patch of this perfection well as I say I think times are definitely changing and we need to eradicate the use of the word weed I'll just say this I'm not asking for the word weed to be removed from the English dictionary <laughs> That would be a bit of a feat. Um, I wouldn't like to be as woke as to say that, but what I think we should be doing is using the correct terminology when we're talking about our native flora, because that's what this is. This is a species that is native to the UK and many other parts of the world where it is a very, very good source of food for many, many species early on in the season. So the dandelion, yes, definitely spread the word. And of course, one of the things that I'm trying to get in, involved with guys and get you get guys involved with, I should say, as well, is a no-mow summer. We've already got the concept of no-mow May here, um, which is great, but I think it's a bit negative as well because it actually, it almost subjects us to go in our gardens and then, or gives the wrong impression that we could should then cut everything down in June which is obviously a horrendous idea when things are really getting going so yes no mow summer I'm really encouraging you guys to not mow your lawn um, and if you have to or if you want to if you want to manage it a little bit just to appease the neighbours because you can't quite um, let go completely then mow a strip around the edge mow a path through the middle and let me know how you get on I know I've covered this in many topics in some of the previous videos of the flowering nectar lawn video that I did in France um, a week or two back and also in some of the other previous videos but I really can't urge you guys enough to take this concept on because you will see the benefits for wildlife as we move through the season and again another full video um, I've done that I'll put a link to at the end of this one about all the benefits of a no-mo summer which I did recently where I was joined by some lovely cattle if you haven't seen that one <laughs> so yes I really think we should all be doing our bit to let areas like this grow and the dandelion speak to your local councils try to stop them from mowing the verges because they really are a vital source of nectar and pollen at this time of year so the more we can encourage people to stop mowing areas the longer we can provide habitats for wildlife and the more hopefully wildlife there will be in our landscape so yes thank you all so much for watching guys i really hope you've enjoyed seeing this absolute field of gold behind me today and yeah i'm actually just about to start making a wildlife pond in that garden over there so that's why i'm stood in this field in wiltshire a lovely part of the world getting towards the southwest of the uk anyway thank you so much for watching guys as always do hit that subscribe button then you won't miss a single video i post twice a week on a wednesday and a sunday at 6 p.m gmt <sighs> i don't know if i take some editing <laughs> Anyway, I know you guys appreciate it and I know you guys are fully on board with the messages that I'm sending you. So thank you all for the support. It means the world to me and stay tuned guys, lots more ways on how you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.